Hey guys, this is test 42 game 4. This is the students reviewing plays game. It is a matching game because we are associating the students J, K, L, M, and O with the plays S, T, and U. Now I've laid out some rules here, but I'm going to explain all of that. We don't know exactly how many students review each play. They leave it kind of open-ended, but the rules do tell us quite a bit here. So the first rule tells us that K and L both do fewer things than M in terms of frequency, in terms of plays reviewed. We know that L, neither L nor M can ever go with J. We know that K and, o, o, K and O both do T, so I place those on the T column. And we know that exactly two students have equal play review schedules, let's say. Now, this is just an initial setup for the game, but we'd a, we can actually do quite a lot in terms of making multiple main diagrams. So we know that K and L each do fewer than M, but we know that M cannot do all three because it conflicts with J. Therefore, we know M is doing two, K and L are doing one, and J itself is also doing one. So I would actually make three different main diagrams based upon the placement of M and J. We could have J going on S, J going on T, J going on U, and then have M go wherever J does not go. Remember that M and J conflict. So I'm going to set up three main diagrams laying out those possibilities. So as I said, there are two M's, one J, one K, and one L. Again, one K and L because there are fewer K's and L's than M's, and we can't have all three M's because M and J conflict. So this is the number of things that we're dealing with. We've already addressed the two M's by placing them now. We've addressed the one J. We already have K on T, so that's addressed. So all we have left is one L, and then we have an unknown number of O's. So this is our initial setup for the game. It's not complete, of course, but we have addressed most of the potential issues we might face in this game, and this is my actual initial setup for the game. Now question number 19 here is asking us for a complete list of those who could do only S. So first of all, anything mentioning K and O is out because we know that those guys have to, do T, have to do T. They cannot do only S. So for that reason, B and D are eliminated because those mention O and K. Now, we know that M cannot do S only because there are at least two M's in the game. So for that reason, E is eliminated and we can also eliminate C because we know that L and J conflict. So for that reason, we cannot have both of them doing S. C is gone, leaving A as our answer for number 19. Next, number 20, general must be true question. We could simply run through the choices based upon our initial inferences. A, J does more than L. No, of course, J and L are each doing exactly one, so A is eliminated. M does more than J. Yes, we know M is doing two, J is doing one. This is our answer for number 20. I will look at the rest though. C, M does more than O. We know that M is doing two, but we don't know how many O is doing. O could do one, O could do two, O could do three for all we know. C is gone. D, O does more than J. Again, we don't know how many O is doing and that eliminates E as well. O's number is ambiguous. Next, number 21. If we have three people doing U. So of course we only have L and O remaining so we will use those guys to create our quantity, our, our number of three things on the U column in each of these diagrams. So I've inserted L and O onto the U column for each of these. Now they're asking us what could be true. First of all that the bottom diagram ends up being impossible, ends up being a bad diagram because L and J can never be together. So we're actually going to make use of only these top two diagrams here. So they're asking us what could be true. Could we not have M doing U? No, that's impossible. M is definitely doing U in both of these. A is eliminated. Could we have O not doing U? No, O is definitely doing U in both of these diagrams. So B is gone. Could we have J doing U? No, we eliminated that possibility on the bottom. So C is gone. Could we have L doing T? No, our L's are specifically on U in the top two diagrams, which are the only relevant ones here. So D is gone, leaving E by elimination. If we look at E, of course, O doing S is possible 
we have an undetermined number of O's, so we could have O on all three of S, T, and U. So O could be on S in either of these two diagrams right here, making E our answer for number 21. Next, number 22, a complete and accurate list of those who do T. So we know that T is going to have three things at least, right? In fact, you know, it's going to have three, maybe even four possibly. So any choice mentioning only two people is automatically gone, getting rid of both A and B. Next, we can go forward with the information that, you know, we can never have any diagram lacking K because we know K has to do T. So for that reason, E is eliminated down to C and D. Looking at the two, of course, we never have KLO as our three as three people if we're going to have only three. So C is gone, leaving D as our answer. And of course, we see KMO on the bottom diagram right here. So that's our answer for number 22. Next, number 23, if J does not do T, what must be true? So we're getting rid of the middle diagram where J was doing T. The top and bottom ones are relevant to us now. Must we have J on S? No, J could be on U. A is gone. Must we have L on U? We don't really know where L is going. L could be on any of the three for all we know right now, so B is gone. Must we have M on S? Could happen on the bottom, but does not happen on the top, so C is gone. Must we have M on T? Yes, that occurs in both the top diagram and the bottom diagram, the two that are relevant, so D is our answer for 23. And then E, O on U. Could happen. No reason to think it has to happen, though. E is gone, leaving D by elimination if you didn't get it before.